The Mustard Seed Media video podcast is sponsored and created by Mustard Seed Media Inc., creating and developing media and web for tomorrow's Christian ministries. On the web at mustardseedmedia.com. Okay, so let's open up Drupal.org and let's do a little CMS magic. Okay, so let's start with this Photoshop document here and let's turn this thing into a website. Let's get right down to it and edit some CSS, shall we? Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media video podcast. My name is Bob and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. Video is an excellent thing to integrate into our websites. Sometimes, though, it's a little bit difficult if we try and implement it natively. And by natively, what I mean is to actually upload the video files through your browser, uh, have the server reformat it to the proper format, uh, make it available in a nice flash player, organize and manage all those files. It just gets to be a little bit much sometimes or a little bit of overkill if, it's, if we don't really need that robust of a solution. Sometimes we have uh, clients that maybe don't want to pay for that robust of a solution. Sometimes maybe we just don't want to manage that crazy of a, of a setup in our Drupal system. So what we can do uh, that makes it much easier is we can use off-site video. Services like YouTube, like blip.tv, they all do all this stuff for us. Uh, they, they resize the video, they reformat the video, they, they give us a, a decent looking player, they do all this stuff. And if we just utilize their services, and then suck those videos into our website, it makes life much easier. This is what I do a lot of times if a client doesn't want to go through uh, all the rigmarole to set up a major on-site video gallery where they're hosting all the files. We'll set up a gallery that's purely based off of uh, one of these third-party services. So what I'm going to show you today is how to set up a gallery like that, and I'm going to use a module that is not, I, I never hear talked about, but it's one of my favorite little modules. It's called M-Field, or Embedded Media Field, it is a CCK field plugin module, and I'm going to show you how to use it today uh, from start to finish, how to set up a video gallery. Very simple. We'll be able to do it in just a couple minutes. So enough blabbing. Let's dive right in. Uh, the first thing I want to show you here is the uh, just the embedded media file uh, field homepage. Um, it is uh, project slash M field to be able to find it. Uh, and you'll see that there are both uh, five and six versions. We're going to be using the six development version today. Uh, just because it's not totally ready for six yet, but it serves our purposes. So you're going to see that once I've installed that module, uh, I actually have a few different fields uh, the, uh, or a few different modules to enable. The first thing to notice is that we have a main module, which is the embedded media field module. And then we have all these add-on support kind of modules. We have embedded media import, embedded media thumbnail, embedded video field. So what happens is we have this core engine of embedded media field and then we can bring in other types of media. It doesn't just have to be video. We can uh, bring in audio from someplace like Odeo. We can bring in images some, from, from Flickr or Photobucket or something like that. So this is the kind of setup. Today I'm only going to be using video. So I have embedded media field and embedded video field uh, enabled. So the first thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to go ahead and create. Uh, and Check that. We're not going to create our content type first. We're going to go into our site configuration. So under uh, content management, once you've enabled that, we have embedded media field configuration. What we want to do in here is, uh, if, if you know about SWF object and you want to use that, this will use that uh, for the, all the flash content. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, enable the different providers that we want to allow on our site. So we could choose to allow blip.tv, but not Google Video, uh, or any of those things. So each one of these has some different, uh, different uh, settings that you can tweak. Today we're just going to use YouTube as an example. So I'm going to allow content from YouTube. That's all I'm going to do in this setting. I'm going to save that configuration and then I'm done. And now I'm going to go uh, create a new content type. This is going to be a video content type. And uh, just to make things simple, I'm going to get rid of my body field uh, just because I don't want one. And I'm going to save that content type. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on my video field. So I'm going to go to manage fields and I'm going to add a new field called video URL. And for type, I'm just going to choose embedded video. Now once I add that, it's going to give me a bunch of settings that I have to set. 
For this particular field, you'll say, wait a minute, we already chose our provider, why do we have to choose it here? Uh, the difference is, uh, before in the main settings, that's providers allowed, it, allowed throughout the site. You may have more than one video field. So these providers are for this specific video field. So again, I'm gonna enable YouTube. And now here's some really cool settings, is we can resize our video uh, sizes for different uh, formats. This video display settings one, this is our main viewer. Uh, usually it's good to leave it at 425 by 350 unless you want to go higher just because usually YouTube and Blip TV and, and places like that format it at this size. Now we can also have a preview setting uh, which we're actually going to use and I'm going to set it um, at 255 by 210 which is actually 60% of the original size. Uh, it's good to choose a nice round percentage number there uh, to make sure you get a smooth looking video. Uh, we could set our thumbnail images. A lot of these providers send out thumbnails uh, and I'm going to make this provided or uh, required. So once I've set that up, now let's go ahead and create some content. So I'm going to create a video. What I've done here is I've just sucked in, um, or I'm going to suck in a bunch of different just political YouTube videos that I found. So I'm going to take the next couple minutes to import uh, six YouTube videos uh, into my new file field. Now, as I create my last video here out of the six, what I want to point out is how this is actually working. Uh, it's a really cool thing. You might be like, so what? This is just a field. Why? Uh, what are we putting in here? Why does it work? Uh, what happens is with all the different providers you enable, the video field that M field spits out can work in, in two ways. The first way is to just automatically recognize the video just based on the URL that you put in. So all I did is I went to the YouTube page. I went up into my my browser window, I copy the URL, I stuck it in, and it's going to automatically recognize that, that uh, the video on that page and pull that into your website. The other thing you can do, uh, if for some reason it's not working with a provider you chose, is you can actually paste embed code in here. So, uh, you know, when, when sites give you this embed code, you could actually just put that into this field and that would work as well. Uh, so both of them work. And so when I hit save, what you're going to see is this automatically recognizes that video and pulls it in and makes it playable right on my site. That's a really great thing. So let's go ahead and uh, real quick, we're just gonna build a gallery. Uh, we're gonna use views and we're just gonna ba build a quick video gallery. So I'm gonna choose node as my type. Oops, use proper naming formats there. Choose node as my type. Uh, so I'm gonna filter uh, just the content that I want. So I want to choose node type video. It's also always a good idea. I almost skipped this, and I better not, uh, to choose uh, published to make sure your video is published. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my page. And I'm going to set a path on it. We'll just call it slash video. This is going to be the URL where it's available on my site. Uh, we'll allow 10 uh, different video or 10 videos at a time. Uh, I'm going to format this in a grid. This is a really nice way to format a video gallery. We'll put three, uh, three videos across. And uh, then I'm going to add some fields. And so the first field I'm going to add is out of the content section. And I'm actually going to add my video. And it's going to say what size video. This is that, uh, that formatting stuff. I'm going to choose the preview video. And let's also put the title underneath it, just for the heck of it. And we'll link it to its node. Now, by simply doing that, if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to save this and then go to slash video. And there is our off-site video gallery. Very simple on our site. We can play all of these videos right from here. Or we can click on the, the uh, link and go to the full size video. Awesome way to build a very simple video gallery uh, for our site without messing with all that on site video stuff. Uh, just a little tip blip.tv, when you use their video player, uh, you can actually customize their video player so it shows uh, a real nice looking video on your site without all the blip.tv branding, which makes it look even more integrated into your site. That's it. If you have questions, go ahead and ask me over at mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast. Don't forget my, about my other podcast as well, 
an audio podcast that's coming back this week after a little hiatus over at geeksandgod.com with a brand new Drupal website. So visit us over there, and in the meantime, you have a great week. <laughs>